Hey guys, Darren at Supernova Comic Con and Gaming in Perth in 2017. We're here with Tamara Morrison. Thank you very much for talking to us today. All good, my friend, Darren. Massive Matt. fan. I've been wanting to meet you for a very long time and talk to you. Well, here we are. All the way back to your... Let's do it. Jake days. Jake days, even. Yeah. That goes a little ways back. <laughs> yeah, well, it does, but that, yes. was, that was a film that, when it came out, there was people that were shocked. Yes. But the film was that incredible. Yes. It overshadowed any the subject matter because it was just... Even I was shocked. Oh, was that me? <laughs> I remember walking out of the Cannes Film Festival and there I was with Cliff Curtis who played Uncle Bully. Yep. And there I was, Jake the Must, standing there and everyone was coming out of the theatre. And these were people that go to the Cannes Film Festival so they're, they're film people. Yes. But you should have seen the look on their faces when they walked out of Once Were Warriors. They were... <laughs> and then they see me... Oh! Then they see Uncle Bully, huh? And then they see the lady who yeah. played my wife, and they go give her a hug. And these were like people yeah. that see three or four movies a day. Yeah. So I looked at Uncle Bully, he looked at me. He said, Bro, no one's talking to us. I said, That's because you're the rapist and I'm the wife beater. Who the hell's going to talk to us? <laughs> Let's get out of here. Well, exactly right. It, it's a heavy film, but it was it, heavy, but it stands the test of time because people still talk about that film and, and it molded. Well, it molded, well, got kicked you off with everything. Didn't well, everybody, it? even the director, Lee Tomohori, it was yeah. his first feature film. He had made hundreds of commercials, but this yes. was his first feature film. So, yes, it was just one of those, um, you know, those ones very rarely come along. One in a blue moon, those kind yeah. of scripts. So, uh, so um, it was the film that got me noticed in Hollywood. So, uh, it was one of those raw films, too, that sort of yeah. shakes you up a little bit, leaves a funny feeling in in the pit of your gut. So uh, so again, I was very proud of the work. In fact, I was uh, very blessed to get that role. At the time, I was playing as doctor on a oh, soap called Shortland, Shortland Street. Street. Yep. And so a lot of people um, didn't think I could pull it off. So uh, so uh, I had my work cut out. Definitely. Now, yeah. what was your inspiration for uh, studying performing arts? Was it was it always wanted, you always wanted to do that or was there a backup plan? Well, I came from a musical family. I have a famous uncle called Howard Morrison. He's yeah. knighted for his services to entertainment, great oh, well, singer. Yeah. He's like our New Zealand Frank Sinatra. And so I was put on the stage at a young age with the family, yeah. and we'd be singing the oohs and the ahs in the yeah. background, doing the backing vocals. We'd also do the cultural element. So I grew up doing a lot of the Māori yeah. cultural dancing. And so even in the family, we all sang and we have family functions and... We all just start singing. And so I thought, well, there's enough singers in our family, but there was no actors. So I branched into, yeah. uh, into the entertainment world, but I went into drama and acting. So um, I started off as an extra, yeah. and then I gradually got a number of lines, and I got a TV show, and then you know, it just sort of grew from there. Yeah. Now, I have to ask you about uh, Dr. 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 Morrow. Dr. Moreau, yes. Um, you worked with Val. You were going to say Dr. Rupp at the Dr. 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 Street, but <laughs> the island of Dr. Moreau, yes. Yeah, you worked with Val Kilmer and uh, Marlon Brando. Very right? closely with Brando. In fact, I made an effort to make sure... My character was... I was fortunate that my character should have been close to Marlon Brando's character anyway. I was like the right-hand dog. Dog, yeah. dog, dog, uh, dog man, human yeah. man. So, so I made a, a point of mine to stick close to Brando. Now one day, oh, during the it was a bit of a bit of a hard shoot. This one it was up in Queensland, and uh, the direct the first director got fired, and so things snowballed. Then right. they brought in John Frankenheimer. We all got sent home. Then we all got sent back again. But the thing that blew me away was I got to work one day, all dressed up in my makeup dog outfit, and Brando's assistant said, "I watched your movie Once We're Warriors last night." Marlon walked in, sat down, and watched the film. So he had seen the movie. So when he got into work this day, he sort of looked at me and said, I saw your movie. I saw your movie. You should be proud of yourself. But for me, in preparing myself for that film, I'd watched A Streetcar Named Desire yeah. over and over and over again. So I was the Maui Stanley Kowalski in a way. Yeah. So there I was, being praised by the man, Stanley Kowalski, telling me how great he enjoyed Warriors. In fact, thought it was so real, he thought he was watching a documentary at times. Wow. Those were his words. But again, the working with Brando, you, I could compare it to uh, a young opera singer who gets to sing with Pavarotti. Yep. Here's a young actor at the time. I got to work with Brando. 
Because, um, yeah, there's some incredible stories about Brando on set and he likes to... There was a few stories about everybody, and... like everything, but he likes <laughs> to mix it up a bit. Then, uh, But at the end of the day, when the camera was on, I'd noticed thing. He'd ask the cameraman, where's the frame? He liked to use his hands. And so he wanted to know where the frame was. And he was always like this with his hands and busy and loved playing with props. So he would rehearse yeah. with his hands, the props, and he was very generous to me. I was a bit nervous because every yeah, time I was, sure. he'd sort of say something, I'd sort of just jump in and sort of go, yes, yeah. master, yes, master. And he'd go, never, never anticipate, my boy. <laughs> never anticipate. I always remember that. And as an yeah. actor, you shouldn't anticipate anything, you know. Yeah. But I was just a little bit nervous and a bit, you know, I just wanted to be the best I could around Brando. And he'd ad-lib. Yeah. He'd love to ad-lib. He'd like to ad-lib too much sometimes, and the director would call <laughs> cut and go, uh, Marlon, uh, that doesn't make sense. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but let's, uh, let's try another one. So, you know, yeah. uh, so let me try another one. Let's see what comes. But he was very much like that. He liked to play the situation as opposed to try and remember dialogue. Yeah, it would have definitely been incredible to work with him. So, sure. uh, and Val was a very, yeah. Val I love. I'd never seen a performance in uh, Jimmy Morrison. And I thought Val was just exceptional in that. So I got to know both of them very well. And I was blessed that Marlon took a liking to me. Blessed that he gave me a few lessons. Yeah. It was a tough shoot. I remember getting to work one day and uh, the director, John Frankenheimer, goes, uh, t he called me tomorrow. Couldn't say Tim or whatever, but he just said, tomorrow, how, do you, how would you feel killing the leopard man? Uh, the killing the leopard man? Uh, what's going on here, John? Well, Marlon's got to work today and he, he doesn't feel like killing anybody. He goes, <laughs> I don't feel like killing anybody today. So they asked Val Kilmer if he wants to kill somebody. And he doesn't, he's, now he's being like Marlon yeah. Brando, so he doesn't feel like killing anybody. Wow. So I'm third on the list tomorrow. Do you want to kill the leopard man? Yeah. I have no problem killing the leopard man, John. Anything to put me in this movie more, I'll be happy. <laughs> So, yes, but it was a great experience working on that movie. Actually, it was up in Queensland. Yeah. Now, with, um, like, you worked on a couple of genre films, uh, uh, Django Fett, Star Wars. Star Wars, yes. Obviously, uh, Green Lantern as well. Green Lantern, um, Ubbin, sir. I really enjoyed the first 15 minutes of that film. Yeah. Green I, Lantern. I it was just fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> fantastic. But when you, were you actively pursuing those roles, or did they just come to you, or? No, I wasn't actively pursuing those roles. No, they uh, came to me. I auditioned. Yep. Uh, having a New Zealand director helped, Martin yep. Campbell, uh, kind of put me in with the who you know, you know, sometimes, yeah. and um, yeah, they just come about. A lot of prosthetics in Green Lantern. We shot that in New Orleans. Oh, wow, okay. So I got to like that crawfish, or rawfish. Crawfish, yeah. what do you call that stuff in crawfish? Crawfish, yeah. Yeah, those little red thing, beautiful. Yep. Nice now with a Budweiser light. You've got to go take some photos, but one last yes. question to wrap it yes. up. Your Aquaman's daddy? Yes, that's the new one. How's that experience? Well, uh, most of my work starts in August. I have yep. had one scene over there. But so are you in the Justice League film? No, I'm not in the Justice League. Okay. I'm playing, uh, I'm playing uh, Aquaman's dad, yep. the lighthouse keeper, Tom okay. Curry. Okay. And uh, it's also got James Wan directing. I understand yep. he's from Perth yeah, he is, originally. Yep. So um, it's fantastic. Huge. Big movie. Big movie. Well, Don Burgess uh, lighting it. He's done some big movies. Yep. Uh, and... Um, Producers that have done things like San Andreas. They're filming up in the Gold Coast. Yeah. But uh, the thing about Aquaman is we've never seen anything like this before. Yeah. It's going to be a visual vista of something that our eyes have not seen. So I understand that's why James Wan yeah. took on the project because we've never seen anything it's like big. it yeah. in terms of everything being set underwater, the yeah. city of Atlantis, things like that. So when you have actors coming in and going, it's not quite like a, a yeah. car pulling up and you hop out of the car and say some dialogue or jump off your horse, say some dialogue. When you're in underwater sets, it's like the entries and exits. Uh, yeah. Just uh, It's, it's going to be mind-blowing. So um, I'm looking forward to that one too. So Well, I appreciate you taking the time to have a chat with us appreciate today. Appreciate you, Darren. Thank Enjoy you very much. Enjoy the rest of Supernova and uh, good luck with everything. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. So what is it you do? I'm a driver. He has a hum in the drum, plays music to drown it out. And that's what makes him the best. Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y-B. -B -B. Baby. One more job and I'm done. I'm not doing this without you.